All right, welcome back to the channel. So, Canelo Alvarez um, may very well be have to wind up with the PBC and Al Heyman because essentially his uh, boxing situation with the zone is falling apart and there's really not much help, much chance of it being repaired. Um, got a, uh, had a conversation with a insider and I think that it is probably going to head this way. Let's talk about Canelo Alvarez, uh, the zone and the PBC in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. So, a couple years ago, the Zone came to the United States and said that they were going to be taking over boxing. They had a they have a billion dollar budget to do it, and they were going to be taking all of the big American fighters, saving us from pay per view, putting them on an app where we can see great fights, pay per view level fights for nine dollars a month. That was their offer, and that was going to be the future of American boxing, a transatlantic takeover by Matchroom Boxing and their distribution partner, DAZN. Fast forward two years, you have DAZN looking like the only thing that is keeping them in business is spitefulness. <laughs> That's it. Because their business model didn't work and situations have changed in the boxing world that makes their um their original plan even more um untenable untenable is it untenable less likely to take place and they more than likely need to tap out of boxing pretty soon in the united states uh and i think that they would do it if they did not already have so much money invested and that they didn't already have certain people's contracts already set now, why do I say that? Canelo Alvarez is the number one example for that. When they signed Canelo Alvarez to the stupidest contract in boxing history, stupid contract, definitely grasping his straws, definitely, you know, like the fourth quarter Hail, Hail Mary when you're failing, okay? Because they didn't go straight, right straight to Canelo. They tried to build the zone and match room, tried to sign a bunch of other people, a bunch of people. So they could get a bunch of fights, right? They tried to sign Adrian Bronner. Adrian Bronner laughed at him. Wanted to sign, you know, several PBC fighters that they were trying to sign. Tried to get this, tried to get finagle Deontay Wilder over there. Deontay Wilder said no, right? Errol Spence Jr., whenever they mentioned Errol Spence Jr.'s name, Errol Spence Jr. just laughed, right? The funny one, Adrian Bronner, that I missed before, was when they gave Adrian Bronner the money, they made an offer to Adrian Bronner. Adrian Bronner was like, man, this is a joke. You know, this is a joke. I'm loyal to Al. Like, you ain't getting me up off of Al, dog. They didn't get Javante Davis. They did All of the fighters that they said that they wanted to get, they didn't get. Then HBO collapses, right? Because of their wonderful management boxing. Their, that wonderful approach to boxing that Peter King decided to take. You know, the one where they would feature 112-pound guys from Thailand and 130 pound guys from Uzbekistan that you can't even half pronounce their names and don't nobody care about, right? And then nobody want to watch because they were going because they kept their nose to the grindstone and they and they were going to let the boxing writers, you know, determine who it is that they were going to put on TV. So they listened to Steve Kim. They listened to the boxing writers that were in bed with the promoters and they put on a bunch of trash fights. They lost all their good fighters. HBO Showtime passed up ESPN. I mean, excuse me. Showtime actually passed up. Uh, Showtime actually passed up HBO in the actual viewership of the fights. Dude, if somebody had said that that was going to take place three years before that, nobody would have believed it. But it all tend, It all started from Larry Merchant clowning, uh, clowning and acting a fool with. Floyd Mayweather Jr., the American fighter, and the American fighter took his took himself over there to Showtime. HBO collapses. Canelo Alvarez is over there at HBO when it collapses. So people are saying, where is Canelo Alvarez going to go? Where is Canelo Alvarez going to go? Now, when that first happened, I was like, dude, Canelo Alvarez has to go to the PBC. 
because they're the only ones that are investing in pay-per-view. And the only way that you're going to make $35 million a fight is if you're on pay-per-view. So ESPN's not going to, isn't pushing pay-per-view. Showtime's pushing uh, pay-per-view. Later on, after the contract was signed, Fox started pushing pay-per-view. So I was like, why would you go to the zone, right? But when somebody asked me, I thought to myself, but there's a problem here because Oscar De La Hoya would not want to go to PBC. He wouldn't want to cooperate with PBC because the PBC got over on, 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 um, on Oscar De La Hoya and he took all those fighters. <laughs> he took all those fighters, all of those fighters from, uh, from, uh, excuse me, the PBC took all those fighters from uh, Golden Boy. So I'm like, ah, more than likely, by, you know, Golden Boy's not going to want that. Also, Golden Boy had been tanking and had a really bad reputation with ESPN or a bad relationship with ESPN, which is why ESPN signed Top Rank, right? Because originally, Golden Boy had the ESPN contract, but they couldn't produce. So they went to ESPN. So ESPN, excuse me, so Top Rank left, uh, left HBO and went to ESPN. Right, so I'm like, where is Canelo gonna go to ESPN, where they don't have pay per view and nobody to fight? So I said the only way that 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 um the zone gets Canelo is if they guarantee him his last pay per view, the money he made on his pay per views. So he had fought on three pay per views. One was uh Julio Cesar Chavez uh, Jr. and the other two were the Gennady Golovkin fights. So if you and it was publicized that he made $40 million for those fights. So I was like, okay, in order for, or for DAZN to get him, they're going to have to pay him that amount of money. They're going to have to make, they're going to have to assure him that you can earn as much money on DAZN as you would earn on Showtime pay-per-view or later on, right? Because Fox, they didn't have the Fox deal at the time. But it's, so at the time, I should keep it at Showtime. That you can earn on, you can earn on Showtime pay-per-view. Now, People say, well, he couldn't have earned that much on Showtime pay-per-view. Dude, he made Canelo Alvarez his biggest pay-per-view he ever had was on Showtime. And I hate to break this to you, the biggest pay-per-view fights ever, right? Monitor in, in, in actual dollar numbers, not prorated, are PBC Showtime fights. They're the Mayweather pay-per-views, with the exception of, of Oscar De La Hoya. So... Showt and Canelo and Canelo Alvarez had a track record with Showtime, right? He's fought on Showtime pay-per-view before, but he decided not to do it. He decided to go over to the zone for the guaranteed money. But it's like I said, it's the stupidest contract, not from Canelo's out point, but from the zone's standpoint. You're not going to get that many viewers on a month-to-month -month subscription from Canelo Alvarez to pay you every month. Ten, you want him to pay you $100 a year? Because it was at $9.99 at the time, right? For a year, right? Per month for a year. If you sign up for a year, you're going to pay $100 and the only fight you're interested in is Canelo. Dude, people are not going to be interested in that uh, because Canelo, truth be told, is not that big a star. Canelo, now, I'm not saying that he's not a star, that he's not a big name, but he's never been as big a name as Manny Pacquiao was at the height of Manny Pacquiao. He's never been as big a star as, as Floyd Mayweather Jr. was at the height of Floyd Mayweather Jr. being a star. He's never been as big as, as uh, Mike Tyson. He's never been as big as Oscar De La Hoya was. He's never been as big as any of the other guys that you say are superstar names of boxing. Dude, Canelo Alvarez has never been that big because Canelo Alvarez eked. If he did get over, truly get over a million pay-per-views on his pay-per-view fights, he eked just eked over a million just eked over a million not like the pay-per-view numbers that were being done by uh, by Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather Jr or uh or Evander Holyfield or he's not that level of star he's somebody that in this modern time of boxing that people want want to be the mega star and he is a bigger star than than anybody else is really he can sell as many tickets or more tickets as anybody else but that superstar level stuff, dog, he's not there. He could be there. He could be there. But he can't be there on DAZN because people in the United States don't even know what DAZN is still. You can walk out on the street and ask people what DAZN is. They will have no idea. They might think the shit is a new, oh, what's DAZN? 
Ooh, is that that new cinema? Is that that new Cinnabon that they got out? You know, they don't know. You know what I'm saying? Is that new flavor of ice cream or something? So, with the pandemic, DeZone is asking uh, Canelo Alvarez to take a pay cut. We need you to fight for half of your money. If you fight anybody other than Gennady Golovkin. That's what the rumor is that he was told. Now, if that's the truth, what is Canelo looking at? Canelo Alvarez has to leave. He has to leave. If he intends on having five, six more fights and he wants to maximize the amount of money that he can fight, he has to leave the zone. Because the zone is now showing that they are not, uh, that they negotiated in bad faith. Because they're not willing to pay you because they're not willing to fulfill the stupid contract that they signed to begin with. They had to know that they were rolling the dice and it was a stupid decision. Then it was like, dude, under any normal circumstance, we would not do this. But we've got to do something to save our to save face and to try to save this investment that we're doing. Because obviously the guy that we went with originally, Eddie Hearn, to help with this, is not capable of doing it. So we're going to do this last ditch effort. But now that it looks like with the pandemic and every and uh, their revenue, they lost all their subscribers there. I mean, like nine, I'm sure they lost 90 percent of their subscribers and haven't gotten them back yet. And now they've also been through that cycle of having uh, Canelo Alvarez fights and know that they very well may not get many subscribers because of that. But give us the Gennady Golovkin fight and you can have. You know, and then we'll keep our, then we'll keep the promise that we gave you. Canelo Alvarez could be like, nah, man, not doing that, dude. You're going to pay me my full money or I'm not going to fight. And if I'm not going to fight, dude, I'm going to go somewhere else where I can make the, where I can make the money. And right now, the only network, the only networks that are even capable of supporting Canelo Alvarez and the type of things that he's trying to do are Showtime Sports, Showtime Sports, and, um, and Fox. Because if he goes to ESPN, he's going to make even less money because he's got two promoters he's got to pay. Anyway, that's my take on the matter. I'm looking forward to seeing how this thing ends with Canelo. I'm hoping that he might wind up over there at PBC and it can force him into a Jamal Charlo fight or some real fights with like the guys that are 154 pounds moving up to 160. Dude, because Canelo Alvarez is a great fighter and there's a lot of really great fights that can be made but they're just choosing not to do it because of this crazy contractual situation. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think. And with that, I'm out. Peace.